Okay, I'll try to keep this relatively brief, but um, I think uh, to be serious, uh, I, I think has misunderstood what I was uh, uh, what I was saying and communicating in my prior video. Um, I was pointing out that the uh, that the original argument, the original proposition, struck me as um, an equivalency statement, not instead of an analogy, but in addition to. Um, that it function uh, that it was working as both, and that the uh, differing um, uh, the differing layers from which it was drawing rhetorical power, uh, persuasiveness, um, uh, kind of relied on a conflation of the two. That uh, it was appealing as an analogy in one way, appealing as an equivalency statement in another, um, and that uh, problems on on differing uh, on uh, on, on uh, differing tiers of analysis um, uh, present us with uh, well uh, again um, I am less interested in why the statement is wrong than I am uh, it, well it, it basically because I feel like that had already been covered but um, more uh, why it would work why this would be uh, why this would be persuasive why it would be rhetorically effective so uh, and yes I am breaking out my extremely limited art skills once again um, so let's say we have two domains where this uh, uh, where this statement is functioning uh, we have the equivalency statement and you'll bear with me because I am writing upside down we have the equivalency statement and we have the and we have the analogy um, so uh, in uh, in the analogy we are comparing uh, uh, we are comparing two properties to uh, two pairings of properties and saying that between these groupings there is a connection. Um, and what I was saying in the equivalency statement is that uh, in, uh, in the equivalency statement these external properties like uh, vegetarians and uh, 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 vegetarians and trying to pass law, um, evangelicals and trying to pass law, those specific properties which incidentally have their own you know proposed relationships um, <clears throat> Uh, are are really irrelevant are really irrelevant to the equivalency statements uh, uh, side of the structure but again I'd say that both are present um, this isn't an either or uh, I'm saying that on, on one layer of this uh, uh, on one layer of this declaration uh, we have an analogy but in terms of motive in terms of motive we only have one element which is not actually a comparison between two properties but rather is simply a single property now <clears throat> uh, that um, the motive in situation a is identical to the motive in situation B um, not that they are two separate instantiations of the same thing or that they are similar um, but rather that they are identical that for all intents and purposes um, uh, for all intents and purposes are external our secondary factors are completely uh, completely irrelevant to the kind of statement that's being made and if we uh, kind of uh, expand uh, uh, expand this further um, what we wind up with is uh, uh, is this the single the single little point here is providing the motive force the dynamism in relation to both yay limited art skills both um, propositions in the analogy itself now why this does not grant any kind of uh, syntactical clemency um, is uh, is very simple if we move uh, if we uh, have moved from uh, from uh, say uh, 
this kind of uh, 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 we have moved towards uh, this uh, this kind of relationship. Um, the connection between these two points um, in say uh, our our ridge, uh, uh, between uh, 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 between these two points say um, uh, the uh, uh, the indirect object in both statements in the analogy. Um, the validity of the relationship still applies because we are applying, uh, we are trying to connect this idea of uniformity of motive force towards both sides, towards both propositions. So whether, whether, uh, 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 whether, uh, and God, this is an incredibly unclear diagram. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> but whether we can connect um, evangelicals to vegetarians or um, this legislative action to that legislative action is still a valid question because we are saying if any uh, if anything I would say that it is more uh, important to ask that when we say that our motivational responses to both situations are identical now uh, if we were saying that how I feel about vegetarians trying to enact law is similar to how I feel about how uh, about evangelicals enacting law then uh, we've uh, we've uh, for all intents and purposes constructed an analogy to analogy um, and that's uh, there we can uh, there we can ask okay is this motivation really similar to that motivation and at that point we have to uh, we have to evaluate each step of the way independently um, and, uh, and as as uh, to be serious points out, um, uh, they uh, uh, analogies are difficult to construct, and there are many potential points of failure. Um, however, however, and and the analysis of such can uh, can get quite involved. However, that's not what we have. We do not have an analogy to analogies. What we have is a proposed equivalency in relation to analogies um, which is a, a, a much a much tougher position to support um, and the analysis uh, uh, the analysis thereof um, is uh, is if anything um, uh, if anything far simpler uh, we have a subjective proposition uh, uh, we have subjective proposition of um, personal motivation in two differing scenarios and we have proposed that the two are the same um, uh, uh, that uh, uh, that the uh, the motivation uh, the motivations and the motive force in both are the same it is important to note that uh, as I said in my earlier video in um, in uh, in this kind of relationship that we have proposed here there is only one actor there is only one person um, the Christians are not people the vegetarian uh, uh, vegetarians are not people um, they are purely environmental forces they are um, predicating uh, predicating forces for uh, uh, for the emergence of the scenario to which the only real uh, agent uh, in the problem is reacting so um, we have uh, uh, we have our exclusive agent in uh, uh, in the model um, that uh, that motive force motive uh, uh, that motive force um, why I do things relating to two differing sets uh, uh, two differing sets of circumstances and are being asked to um, first uh, 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 first uh, uh, we are uh, uh, asking whether or not the two sets of circumstances really can be related to each other but on the equivalency statement side that question is entirely suspended. Um, it, it is uh, it is entirely suspended so we have um, we have a great big epistemic wall here blocking the path of our analogy <laughs> blocking the path of connecting this equivalency statement um, with um, uh, uh, um, uh, blocking the path connecting this equivalency statement with this um, uh, with this analogy um, and this is uh, this is why again I say um, uh, I'm I'm not discounting the problems in analogy by pointing out equivalency statement if anything I think I'm illustrating a bigger problem um, and that being on this side of the wall on this side of the wall we are operating entirely axiomatically
um, uh, the uh, the prop uh, the proposition uh, the equivalency statement uh, uh, in uh, the proposition that motive A is perfectly congruous with motive B. Um, this is purely axiomatic. Um, on the other side, on the other hand, we are being asked to engage analytically. Um, so we have a proposed relationship between uh, uh, we have a proposed relationship between an entirely uh, uh, an entirely uh, axiomatic point and this relies uh, uh, this lies in uh, as I said in the uh, in the other video uh, purely in the subjective domain and a sub uh, a uh, subjective proposition that by the nature of the construction of uh, the general proposition you know again we have exclusive agency here and that exclusive agency also happens to coincide with uh, the exclusive point of absolute subjectivity with no transubjective context you know if we had if we had real people over here uh, if we had uh, if we had real people over here then we could uh, kind of draw a uh, meta subjective or, or trans subjective context that puts all of these all of these points into a kind of a, a similar knowledge claim domain but we don't we don't have that um, so uh, again, we, we wind up with uh, exclusive point of subjectivity, purely axiomatic, and no transubjective context. There is no way to connect that equivalency statement. Um, uh, there is no way to uh, connect that equivalency statement with that, the uh, proposed circumstances in that analogy and uh, say that there is any significant correlation thereof. Um, so even if uh, uh, so, uh, uh, even if uh, the analogy stood, and again, I didn't really comment on the analogy because I felt it had already been pretty well covered. Um, uh, uh, even if uh, uh, even if uh, the analogy stood, uh, we couldn't really connect um, the equivalency statement to the analogy in such a way that we could assert any kind of causal relationship between this um, uh, uh, between uh, this set of circumstances and that motivation at which point it becomes purely arbitrary and the motivational force is lost